Good morning, everyone. Good, morning. Good to see you uh, on this uh, nice Sunday morning. Feeling like we're finally getting past summer, right, into autumn. The season is really coming. So uh, today the, the, the topic I chose is ownership and victimhood. So on one side you can see heaven is the area of ownership and victimhood is the area of hell and suffering, right? So uh, I want to start with a, a story. Uh, you've actually probably heard this story before, but um, there's a, a parent, a really loving parent, who created a, a really beautiful garden and playground for, for his kids. And, and so he let the boy go into the playground and play in the playground. And then he brought in the daughter so the daughter could play in the playground. You know, they're having a good time. And, but the parent says, OK, there's one section of the garden that, you know, uh, don't go there unless I'm with you, because it's dangerous. You get hurt. So, you know, have fun, but re remember, don't go to this part because you might get hurt. Only go if you're together with me. So they're having a good time, whatever, and then um, one of the servants comes, and, and he basically, long story short, convinces the daughter to, oh, let's go play in the garden, in this part of the garden that, you, that the parents said no. And then she comes back and she convinces her brother also to go play in that part of the garden that's the dangerous part. So then the parent comes back and sees that they've been hurt. That they've been damaged. He says, what happened? Did you go to, over that section that I told you was dangerous? And uh, what does the oldest one, the brother, say? He says, oh, the, my sister made me do it. Because you let her come in the garden to play with me, it's her fault. And what did she say? It's not my fault. It's the servant. It's his fault. Right? So hopefully you recognize this is the Garden of Eden story. A little bit abridged. And there's a lot more to talk about the, you know, the motivation and the process and how, how it all happened. But uh, the point that I want to make here is that this is the first story in human history of people playing victims. Blaming other people, not taking responsibility, not being responsible, but blaming the other. Oh, it's not my fault. It's someone else's fault. Uh, here's from um, True Parents. Those who once belonged to God fell under the sway of false love after deviating from the true path of love. Although they were created on the principle of ownership based in love, they were destroyed by fallen love. So instead of being the owners the, the lords of creation that Adam and Eve were intended to be, they became victims and played the role of victim and not taking responsibility and blaming others. So uh, how about a definition for victim? Uh, actually, the word comes from the uh, Latin, and it's the opposite of victor, right? The victor is the one who wins, and the victim is the one who loses. So you have victor or victim. So the root of it is the one who is conquered instead of the victor is the one who done the conquering. So bringing it more modern day uses is basically the one who's harmed, injured, or killed as a result of some event or action. And there's genuine victims, you know, people who suffer from, from a genuine uh, uh, events and whatever that they have no control whatsoever over. But what I want to talk about is victimhood. This is where we put on the uh, hat, the, the mantle, the, the mask of, I'm a victim. <laughs> and we use that to protect ourselves from getting, dealing with the consequences of mistakes we've made. And also we use it to manipulate other people. Oh, poor me. <laughs> I'm just a victim here. It's not my fault. <laughs> and we use it to manipulate other people in our lives. So maybe I could use a little help here. I know probably never of you have ever made up an excuse why it's not your fault, right? Oh, it's not my fault because blah, 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 blah. But, you know, you may have heard someone say something like that, and you know, maybe you remember something that you may have said in the distant past, because I know, you know we're all fighting to overcome this victim, uh, victimhood mentality. You know, the most famous one is, why don't you have your homework? 
My dog ate my homework. It's not my fault. It's the dog's fault. <laughs> right? Give me some other ones. The traffic. Oh, I, you know, it was because of the traffic. It's not my fault that I didn't plan for traffic. It's the traffic's fault that I'm late for this meeting. My mom didn't wake me up. My mom didn't wake me up. You know, it's her fault. Or the alarm clock. The alarm clock didn't go. It's not my fault. It's the alarm clock's fault. It's my mom's fault. It's the person who's supposed to wake me up. Another one. I didn't stop using because you didn't stop using. Well, because you, that's why. You know, because you didn't stop, I can't stop. Yeah. You know, it's your responsibility. Not my, you know, if you had, then it'd be easy for me. You know, uh, I had no choice. Right? How about that one? That's a great one. Uh, I you know, I had no choice. It was the only thing I could do. Or, um, uh, I thought you meant something else. It's your fault. You know, you told me to do it, but I, you know, I didn't think that's what you meant. I thought you meant something else. So it's your fault for not communicating to me, right? So we play that game all the time. And it's, you know, it's, it's kind of automatic because it's like protecting myself. By not being responsible, somehow I, I can avoid the hurt of the consequences of my mistake, my failure. So there's another area too where we, where we play the, use the victimhood card. Uh, look what was done to me. Look what you did to me. Or the, the flip side is, look what you didn't do for me. Right? Can you think of any examples about how, oh, that person inconvenienced me, made my life difficult, and it's the expression of long suffering. You know, to get maybe sympathy or whatever. What? Any examples? They cut me off. They cut me off. You know, they didn't give me a chance to get in there. You know, it's not fair. <laughs> Everyone else is doing it, but I don't get to do it. It's, I'm such a suffering victim. My life is so miserable. If only you. If only you. If only you had done this, you know, for me, you know. You know, you never think of me, right? It's all about me <laughs> and the things that you didn't do or you did do that inconvenienced me in my life. You know, look at the mess I have to clean up. Because of you, I'm such a long-suffering victim, right? So we use that to manipulate people, you know, to get people to feel sorry for us, but also to, to do things for us. You know, and it only has a little bit of benefit because <laughs> sometimes it doesn't work. Maybe it works once or twice, but people get pretty tired of that, right? I mean, I get pretty tired of that. Poor me, poor me. Poor, oh, poor me, right? Look what was done to me. Oh, you know. So both of these are situations where we're giving away power. When I say it's not my fault, I'm saying, uh, you know, I couldn't do anything about it. I was totally helpless. When I say, oh, because you did that to me, then I'm in this bad situation. I have no power. It's you that controls my life and my happiness. So then there's the, even the broader one, you know, where we use fate. Oh, it, I never have any luck. You know, you're not blaming a particular person. You're blaming the universe, right? Oh, uh, because I'm too tall, because I'm too short, Oh, it's because I'm too wide, or I'm too thin, or I'm not smart enough, you know. That's why I'm a victim, right? We blame fate. I just wasn't meant to succeed, I think. Right? Any others? Hey, not that you've ever used any of these, but, you know. Oh, nothing goes right for me, you know. I can't do anything right. Oh. <laughs> I'll never win the lottery. Fate has kept me from becoming rich because I never won the lottery. And then the other one is the kind of the, the, the self-inflicted victimhood. Uh, it, it's a pity party, right? Let's get other people to feel guilty too. Or actually, it's even my own guilt feeling, you know, beating myself up for my mistakes. You know, I'm a victim of my bad attitude. Oh, uh, nothing I do is good enough because I'm, I'm too flawed a person. Uh, I'm a terrible father, devil parent. I'm a terrible husband. You know, oh, there's no hope for me. So I stopped trying, right? 
because I can just play the victim. Uh, it's, you know, it's out of my control. It's just the way it is. It's hopeless. I'll never get out of this hole I've dug. It's just too deep. You know, even to the extent of saying, God could never forgive me. God couldn't love me because I'm such a bad person. So all these are, are they're ways that we give away the power that God has given us to be divine sons and daughters, lords of creation, owners of true love. All this is, is emphasizing, you know, I'm not responsible, you know, I'm protecting myself. We run away from being responsible and we manipulate other people. Not my fault. Look what other people have done to me. Oh, it's my bad fate, or I'm just a horrible person. And all these are excuses that we use to not be the true loving people that God designed us to be. The powerful people, the people who can transform lives that God designed us to be. True sons and daughters of God. All this is just keeping us from, victimhood is keeping us from realizing that genuine potential. Now, at the root of victimhood, you know, the way, reason we go there so easily is we need love. The bottom line in our life is that we need to know that we're loved. And the first source of that, of course, is God, our Heavenly Parent. That's the first source of, of knowing that we're loved unconditionally. That's the basis of, of strength. That's the real protection we have. You know, we try to protect ourselves from people attacking us, but... Truly, if we feel loved, then we have the power to digest anything. And it's not just God, but God designed us to be in relationship with people. So we need to have people in our lives, too. People that we can trust. People that we have a loving relationship with. People who can look at us and even see all my warts and shortcomings and still love us and care for us. And instead of manipulating people, if our focus is not on me, 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 how can I get people to focus on me? Really, victimhood is just another expression of selfishness. If I'm thinking about how am I making a difference in the lives of the people around me, how am I loving others, then why would I want to manipulate others? I want to love. I want to make a positive difference in the people's lives who are around me, who anyone whose life that I have an opportunity and the blessing to touch. From uh, a speech by uh, Father Moon called Opportunity for Happiness or Unhappiness. That's a pretty good title, right? Father Moon says, don't allow yourself to be made unhappy by another person. Be determined not to think of things in that way. Always think of yourself as being the cause, not other people. Being the cause means, like another way of saying being the owner, the one responsible. How easily do we say, that person made me mad? Now, what does that mean? Oh, I had no choice. You know, you know they did what they did and they control my life. That person made me sad. That person hurt my feelings. I had no choice in the matter. It's all theirs. So we're giving away all of our genuine, divine ownership and power and responsibility. And it's not even true. Because the truth is, some person can act one way in one circumstance, and a different person can act the same way in another circumstance. And we, you know, one makes us feel mad, one makes us feel happy. It's crazy. It has nothing to do with the external, it's how we respond. So we are actually the owners of how we respond to the, the things that happen to us in, a, in our life. So. To overcome the, the, the tendency towards uh, victimhood and using that as an excuse in our life, the most important thing we need is we need love. We need to know that we're loved and we need to have relationships of love in our life. And then we don't need to be fearful and, and to protect ourselves all the time. And we don't need to manipulate other people. So, two things. We need to remember the cost of victim thinking. You know, I'm giving away my power. I'm giving my, my right to be happy by, be, by playing a victim, by choosing victimhood. And also, you know, recognizing those costs and being willing to give up that cost. You know, the realizing it's taking away my, my vitality in my life 
and also recognizing that we need to have love in our life. The core first being God, but then also in our relationships with people, you know, starting with our family, but also people outside, you know, people that we have genuine trusting relationships with. So instead of victimhood and powerlessness, what we need is, is ownership and responsibility. Uh, here's how um, Father Moon puts it. In order to become owners of true love, we must lift up others and love them more than we love ourselves. As individuals, we need to establish mind-body unity with true love at the center. In the family, we need to build unity between husband and wife and between brothers and sisters. Then, we must unite nations in the same way, expanding this from the individual to our family, to society, to the nation, the world. But the core of this is the experience of true love within my own mind and body, my relationship with God and with people around me. This is how we become owners of true love. When our focus moves from being me, me, protecting myself, getting other people to do what I want, to how do I be a person of true love who's con genuinely caring and concerned to make a positive difference in the lives of the people around me. Loving the people in my lives. So ownership. Here's the definition. To have full claim, authority, power, dominion, possession, and responsibility. This is ownership. This is the opposite of victim. You know, this is the victor. right? We are designed to be victors in our life. Owners of our life. Not the victim, the victor. Okay? And this term, uh, ownership, is a term that true parents use a lot. And actually, it's at a core at a, of our unificationist tradition. Right? Uh, every Sunday, at the end of service, right? We recite this motto. Let us be true owners of the heavenly kingdom, of Chunal Guk, who practice true love in resemblance to our creator, the heavenly parent. Let us become true owners. And then our family pledge, which is like our unificationist creed or, or definition of, of our beliefs, and every, uh, the eight points, every one of them begins with, as the owner of Chono Guk, the one that's responsible for the heavenly kingdom, our family pledges. As an owner of the heavenly kingdom, our family pledges and promises for the eight, eight points. So if we're the owner of the heavenly kingdom, and we're not living in the heavenly kingdom, then whose responsibility is that? It's the owner's. It's the owner's responsibility. It's so easy to say, oh, you know, I'm having such a hard time. I'm, I'm a victim of this fallen world. Right? I'm a victim of the circumstances and, and all the things. We're not designed to be victims. We're designed to be victors, owners. And so we repeat this in our pledge. We repeat this in our motto. We repeat this at the core of our thinking. We need to see ourselves as people who are owners, responsible people who make a, a powerful healing difference by bringing God's love into any circumstance, in any environment that we're dealing with. So this week I want to talk a little bit about cultivating ownership over victimhood in ourselves. And the next week I want to talk about how do we as owners of Chono Guk, Heavenly Kingdom, Tribal Messiahs, how do we cultivate ownership and responsibility for people who are playing the role of victim in our lives? Okay, there's a lot to explore with that, but the starting place is us. So I just want to finish up with us, right? First place we start. How do I cultivate ownership and a sense of responsibility and get rid of my attitude of, of victimhood? And the first place is just our language. When we, every time I see, you made me this, you made me that, okay, whoops, nope, wrong language. You didn't make me. I responded to what you did this way, you know, but it's me that's responding. It's me that's making the choice. Choosing our language, recognizing all the time we we're so ready to make an excuse, right? Oh, to protect myself. Oh, 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 oh. it's not my fault. <laughs> Give up on it's not my fault. Choose. I take responsibility. You're right. I need to fix that. Something's not working. I need to fix that. 
So our language, if we pay attention to the, you know, and it takes time because it's so easy to slip into that victim language because we feel like it protects us. We feel like we can get other people to do what we want them to do that way. You know, there's a lot of superficial benefits, short term, but the long term, it doesn't leave us happy and it doesn't leave us fulfilled. Then the, the second point is like, this is the, the, the magic bullet for just about everything in our life. Gratitude. <laughs> Gratitude is like the, 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 the silver bullet that just hits everything in our life. You know, when, no matter what our circumstance, if we're able to take a stand of, of being grateful for whatever circumstances we're given, the difficult, the challenging, whatever, if we can have a grateful heart, it's so liberating, it's so healing, and so powerful to bring genuine happiness and contentment in our lives when we can have a heart of gratitude no matter what. Here's some quotes from True Parents. Be people who can cherish gratitude toward God and nature and live in service to them without complaint. Only people with such a mind can become true owners. Having a grateful heart is a foundation for being victors, for being true owners in our lives. Gratitude over complaint. Complaint destroys our happiness. Complaint, it may relieve stress a little bit, but it never makes us happy. It never gives us satisfaction and fulfillment. Whereas gratitude brings a healing feeling in our heart and mind. Another quote. You can become an owner of Charnel Gook, an owner of the heavenly kingdom, only when you become a person who can overcome hardships in the most extreme circumstances and still be eternally grateful. Offer praise and the glory of attendance to heaven, as well as leave your descendants something to be proud of. Gratitude is such a powerful tool no matter how difficult or challenging our circumstance, to, to move us out of the realm of, oh, poor me, to, oh, grateful me, oh, victorious me, instead of victim me. And the last point, just uh, again, to say it over and over again, love is the foundation for everything. Most important in our life is that we build that core foundation of love. So that means... Number one, God. Number two, people, our relationship with people. Please invest quality time every day with God. Now, this is why our, our habit, our tradition, daily study, read the scripture every day, nourish our mind, right, from reading God's word. But also invest quality time with God. You know, quiet time, set aside. You know, where we, not just the prayer, oh God, please do this, please do this, please do that. <laughs> please take care of this, and please keep, take care of that, and please help that person, please do this. No, fine, those, I'm not saying don't pray those kind of prayers, but also invest time in prayers. God, thank you. In fact, I really recommend always start your prayers with thank you. <laughs> and sit in the presence of gratitude, and let the, the, the memory and the thoughts of things that we have to be grateful for. Fill us. And let God's presence fill us with the gratitude of God's precious love. And let God's presence be with us. And let us sit with that. Meditate. Reflect. And let God's love fill us. Because we need to be refilled a lot. <laughs> At least I do. <laughs> you know, it's important that we refill ourselves, refill our hearts and minds on a regular basis. Daily, daily. Please do it daily. It's okay to do it more than once a day, too. It's really good. Just to sit be grateful, and receive God's love. And also, though, we need to have relationships of love and trust in our life. People in our life that we care for, that we invest in, and that we have a trusting relationship with. It's so important that we develop and cultivate those friendships, those relationships. We need to have people in our life that we can go to when we're looking terrible. <laughs> When we're feeling terrible, when we're so upset and we're obviously not being heavenly loving people, right? People that we can share with and share our heart or complaint who see us as God's child, who love us as God's child, 
and don't take our garbage <laughs> and don't accept our, our victimhood. Come on, oh poor me. What? Oh poor you, you're an owner of the heavenly kingdom. What do you mean? <laughs> you're, you're my precious brother, my precious sister. You're not a victim. You're a heavenly child. And I'm, boy, it sounds like you're going through a lot of difficulties. Who can be there with us? And we also want to be people like that for others. So we need God. We need that love relation foundation with God. And we need our love relationship with key people in our life. Now, not everybody in your life, not everybody in my life, is going to be a person who can give me that love when I need it. That's why it's important. Pay attention and find those people. Cultivate those people. Cultivate those relationships in, in our lives. The root of the problem of all this victimhood mentality is a problem of the lack of the experience of, of true love, of God's presence, of the presence of God's true love and the love from our brothers and sisters in our family, in our lives. So, let me conclude with this. I want you to stand proudly in the position of restored owners who possess a love that is greater than Satan's love. I expect you to fulfill the responsibilities of an owner with the authority of a descendant and heir of heaven who's inherited the proud tradition on behalf of God, Jesus, and the true parents. So, let's not be victims lying to protect ourselves or, or to manipulate others, but owners, owners of true love who have the power to transform ourselves and to transform the world. Please join me in prayer. Good morning, Father, Mother, God, our, our loving, heavenly parent. We're so grateful for your, your fatherly love and your motherly love and the way that you embrace us and, and you always want to be close to us in, in heart and mind. Heavenly Parent, we're, we're so sorry that many times we, we, we push you aside and, and forget about you in our life and, and, and so easily fall into the trap of just focusing on our own selfish needs and desires, and, which doesn't lead to our happiness, Heavenly Parent. And we come back to you with a repentful heart, always turning back to the true source of healing, the true source of love, which is you. Thank you, Heavenly Parent, for never giving up on us, for always being there, always anxious to embrace us, to pull us closer and fill us with your presence and with your love. Heavenly Parent, we want to be people, true sons and daughters, that can reflect your love to the world around us, who can be true owners of true love, true victors who bring your love and your presence into the world around us. Thank you, Heavenly Parent, for the, all the investment that you've made in each one of us. You know each one of our circumstances, God, each challenge that we're dealing with. And we bring them before you right now, Heavenly Parent, and offer our hearts again to you. So grateful, forever grateful for your love and your presence. In our own determination to be the victors, to be the owners of this world, to be the ones who can make the positive difference in our own lives, and in the lives of the people around us. Thank you so much for the anointing we have because of your love. And we know that through you, through the power of your presence in our lives, and through the relationships with our brothers and sisters, your sons and daughters in the world, that truly we can be instruments for bringing healing to this world. Healing in our family, healing in our community, healing in every opportunity, Heavenly Parent. So we thank you as your sons and daughters gratefully and offer ourselves again to you. Amen.